Have you ever wondered what lit the fuse of the American Revolutionary War? Let's travel back in time to the period following the French and Indian War when the early tensions between the American colonies and the British government were just starting to simmer. At the heart of these tensions were fiscal policies that Britain imposed on the colonies to recover war debts. The British Parliament introduced the Sugar Act, aimed at curbing the smuggling of sugar and molasses in the colonies and the Stamp Act, which imposed a tax on every piece of printed paper used. Not long after the Townsend Acts came into play, levying duties on glass, lead, paints, paper and tea imported into the colonies. The colonists however bristled at these acts, rallying behind the cry of no taxation without representation. They felt unjustly taxed, as they had no voice or vote in the British Parliament. These acts and policies planted the seeds of rebellion, bringing the American colonies and the British government on a collision course. The tension reached a boiling point with the Boston Massacre in 1770, didn't it? No one could have predicted that a squabble in the streets of Boston would escalate into a deadly confrontation. British soldiers, cornered by an angry mob of colonists, opened fire, leaving five of the townsfolk dead. This tragic incident, which came to be known as the Boston Massacre, only served to fan the flames of anti-British sentiment across the colonies. Just three years later, the colonists struck back in a bold act of defiance. Frustrated by the Tea Act, which imposed taxes on imported tea, a group of colonists boarded three British ships in the Boston Harbor. In a single night, they dumped 342 chests of British tea into the murky waters below. This audacious act, later known as the Boston Tea Party, was a clear message to the British Crown. The Boston Massacre and Tea Party were not just isolated incidents, they were manifestations of the growing discontent in the colonies. The British response to the Boston Tea Party was swift and severe, wasn't it? In retaliation, they imposed punitive laws known as the Intolerable Acts. These were designed to punish the Massachusetts colony for their defiance and deter further rebellion. The Intolerable Acts closed the port of Boston, revoked Massachusetts charter, and allowed British soldiers to be housed in private homes, among other things. But rather than discouraging rebellion, these acts only fueled the fire. In September of 1774, delegates from 12 of the 13 colonies convened in Philadelphia for the First Continental Congress. They gathered not as separate colonies, but as a united front, coordinating their resistance to the intolerable acts. They drew up a list of grievances, called for a boycott of British goods, and planned to meet again if their demands were not met. The First Continental Congress marked a significant step towards unity among the colonies, setting the stage for the forthcoming revolution. And then, the inevitable happened. The fuse reached the powder keg. Let's turn our attention to April 1775, and the battles of Lexington and Concord, the first military engagements of the American Revolutionary War. In the early morning of April 19th, British troops marched from Boston to the nearby towns of Lexington and Concord. Their mission was to seize and destroy military supplies that the colonial militias had stored. The British government, underestimating the resolve of the colonists, believed this show of force would quell the growing rebellion. However, the colonists had been warned of the British advance. As the Redcoats approached Lexington, they found a small colonial militia waiting for them on the town's common green. The first shot of the battle, and indeed the war, was fired. It's unclear which side fired it, but it was a shot heard around the world. The British quickly dispersed the outnumbered colonists, but found themselves under attack as they continued on to Concord. At Concord's North Bridge, a larger colonial force engaged the British. Outnumbered and outgunned, the Redcoats began a tactical retreat back to Boston. But the journey back was anything but orderly. All along the route, Colonial militias, now alerted to the British movements, fired upon the retreating troops from behind trees, walls, and buildings. By the time the British reached the safety of Boston, they had suffered over 200 casualties. These battles marked a significant turning point. They shattered any hopes of a peaceful resolution to the conflict between the colonies and the British government. The colonists had not only stood up to the British army, they had shown they could inflict significant damage. The battles of Lexington and Concord were a clear signal that the American colonists were ready to fight for their rights and liberties. They were willing to challenge the mightiest military power of the time, not with words, but with muskets and cannons. With the shots fired at Lexington and Concord, the American Revolutionary War had begun, 
a war that would change the course of history forever.